Hey, I'm Jennifer. I'm 34, been married to Jake for about a year now, and I spend most of my days glued to my laptop, teaching students from all over. Life was cruising along pretty okay until the day it wasn't. You see, Jake and I live in this pretty awesome house my folks left me. It's big, cozy, and has been just ours until recently. Jake's folks, Martha and Bob, live just down the road. At first, it was kinda nice having them pop by. But then, the nice turned into a nightmare. Martha, with her lifetime badge of housewifery, started nitpicking everything from my cooking to how I kept the house. And let me tell you, her standards were somewhere up in the stratosphere. Jennifer, darling, this pasta is a bit, bland, don't you think? She'd say, screwing up her face as if she'd bitten into a lemon. And the house? Oh, boy. A woman's touch means a spotless home, she preached. You do want to keep Jake happy, don't you? I bit back a million and one retorts every time. Martha, I work. It's not like I can magic the dust away between classes. I tried explaining once, hoping for a shred of understanding. She just sked, waving her hand as if swatting my words away. Nonsense. It's about prioritizing. Your job is to take care of the home. And Jake, of course. One day, she even had the nerve to inspect Jake's laundry, right in front of me. You're letting him wear this? The colors have faded. You're not using the right detergent. I was seething, fists clenched, so tight I could probably turn coal into diamonds. But I swallowed the anger, thinking. Keep the peace, Jennifer. They're not staying with us. It's just a visit. But, man, those visits felt like they were stretching the fabric of my sanity thin. Really thin. One sunny afternoon, I was setting up my laptop for my next online tutoring session when I heard a truck pull up outside. Peeking through the window, my jaw nearly hit the floor. There was Jake, helping his parents unload boxes and furniture from a massive moving truck. My heart sank. This wasn't happening. Martha, ever the matriarch, was directing traffic like she owned the place, while Bob just seemed pleased as punch, not lifting much as he surveyed his new kingdom. Jake caught my eye and gave me an apologetic shrug. I stormed out. Jake, what on earth is going on? Oh, hey, babe. Surprise. Mom and Dad are moving in with us. Isn't that great? He was all smiles, clearly oblivious to the nuclear level of my panic and anger. Great? Great? When were you planning on asking me, your wife, about this little life-altering decision? I was practically spitting each word, incredulous. Babe, calm down. It's just for a little while. They're having some financial troubles, and this way, they can rent out their place for extra cash. It's a win-win. Jake tried to wrap his arm around me, but I was having none of it. Martha chose that moment to waltz over, a commanding figure in her pastel cardigan and pearls. Jennifer, darling, it's so sensible, don't you think? We're all family here. Plus, you've got so much space in this lovely house of yours. It was meant to be shared. Shared? This house was my sanctuary, left to me by my parents who are no longer with us. It wasn't just some communal flop house. I tried to keep my cool, but my voice had other plans. Martha, with all due respect, this is my house. Don't you think this is something that should have been discussed? Oh, sweetheart, don't be like that. You know, family helps family. We'll make such lovely memories together. Martha was all but patting herself on the back, while Bob nodded along, adding his two cents. Yeah, Jennifer. It's about time we all got closer, don't you think? Closer? I didn't even know what to say. The arrogance, the entitlement. It was all too much. Jake looked between me and his parents, a deer caught in headlights. Come on, Jenny. It'll be fine. What's mine is yours, and what's yours is ours, right? Wrong. So very wrong. But as angry as I was, I couldn't bring myself to kick them out on the spot. Maybe it was shock, maybe it was that tiny voice in my head reminding me what family meant to Jake. 
So, I did what I'd become an expert at, I swallowed my fury, plastered on a smile, and welcomed them into my home. As the days turned into weeks, I realized this temporary arrangement was anything but. Martha and Bob made themselves right at home, critiquing my cooking, commenting on my lax cleaning habits, and generally making my life a living nightmare. Jake, meanwhile, was either at work or playing the role of the oblivious husband too well. The temporary situation started to feel like a life sentence. Every day, from the moment I cracked my eyes open to the second I collapsed into bed, was a marathon of trying to juggle work and the incessant demands of my new housemates. One morning, as I was prepping for a particularly important tutoring session, Martha barged into my makeshift office, a frown already etched deep into her face. Jennifer, this place is a pigsty. When was the last time you dusted? And those cups from yesterday are still in the sink. I clenched my jaw, my fingers pausing above the keyboard. Martha, I've got back-to-back -back sessions today. I'll get to it when I can. She huffed, crossing her arms. In my day, we kept a clean house and worked. It's about managing your time better. Managing my time better? I wanted to scream. Instead, I bit back the harsh words and focused on the computer screen, though I could barely see it through the red haze of my anger. Bob wasn't any easier. He had this uncanny ability to need something right when I was in the middle of explaining complex concepts to my students. Jennifer, where's lunch? I'm starving here. He'd bellow from the living room, oblivious to the do not disturb sign I'd hung on my door. It's in the fridge, Bob. Just warm it up, I'd reply, my voice strained with the effort to remain polite. What do I look like, a chef? Can't you take a break and fix something? He'd shoot back, his voice booming through the thin walls. Jake, bless him, tried to be the peacemaker, but his efforts usually amounted to little more than added frustration. Jenny, can't you just drop it for today? Let's have a quiet dinner, yeah, he'd say, trying to smooth over the latest flare-up. Drop it? As if I was the one stirring up drama over lunch and dust bunnies. The pinnacle of this daily grind came one evening when I was trying to wrap up my sessions for the day. Martha decided it was the perfect time to lecture me on the importance of a tidy home, again. You know, Jennifer, a cluttered house is a sign of a cluttered mind. Maybe if you tidied up more, you'd be less stressed. Less stressed? I almost laughed. Instead, I stood up, facing her square on. Martha, I'm working. This cluttered office is paying our bills right now. And maybe if you're so concerned about the cleaning, you could help out? Her face turned a shade of red I hadn't seen before. I am a guest in this house, Jennifer. It's not my job to clean. Guest? The word echoed mockingly in my mind. Some guests they were, turning my life and home upside down. That night, as I lay in bed, staring at the ceiling, I couldn't help but think about the absurdity of it all. Here I was, busting my hump to provide, to teach, and to keep some semblance of peace in my own home, only to be criticized at every turn. Jake's soft snoring next to me was the only sound in the dark room. I turned to look at him, wondering how we ended up here. How did we go from newlyweds excited about our future to roommates, barely speaking, because his parents were driving a wedge between us? Three months into what felt like the world's longest invasion of privacy, Jake came home early one day, looking like he'd just lost a fight with a bear. Jenny, I got fired, he blurted out, not even waiting to sit down. His folks were out, probably terrorizing some other poor soul with their presence, and he made me swear not to spill the beans to them. Great. Just what I needed. Now, it was all on me. My online tutoring gigs were suddenly not just about keeping busy or funding a few extra comforts. They were our lifeline. I doubled down on work, stretching my days thin. Before I knew it, I was not just tutoring, I was running my own online school. A small part of me buzzed with pride, but I kept it under wraps. No need to add fuel to the already blazing inferno that was our household dynamics. Money was tight. Tighter than a lid on a jar that's been sealed for a century. Every penny had to scream for mercy before being spent. 
It got to the point where I had to have the talk with Martha and Bob. Look, I know this is awkward, but I need help with the bills. Maybe you could cover half the rent? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. Their reaction was as if I'd suggested they fly to the moon. What do you mean? Jake's got it covered. He makes plenty, Bob scoffed, waving off my request like a bad smell. Yeah, about that. I started, but Jake's pleading look stopped me. He wasn't ready for them to know. He pulled me aside later, whispering. Just a little longer, Jenny. I'll find something soon, I promise. Promises. Right. Meanwhile, I was teaching, cooking, cleaning, and playing referee, all while trying to smile through gritted teeth. And Martha and Bob? They seemed to have turned complaining into an Olympic sport, barging into my office mid-lesson to demand attention, as if I was hosting afternoon tea instead of running a business. Jennifer, this is unacceptable. You're always locked away in here. When are you going to make time for us? Martha demanded one day, standing in the doorway with her arms crossed while I was in the middle of explaining algebra to a 15-year-old. Martha, I'm working. Can this wait? I hissed, trying to keep my voice down. No, it can't. We're family, and you're neglecting us. She shot back, oblivious to the irony. Bob wasn't any better. When's dinner? We're starving here, and you're just, sitting around. He grumbled on a different occasion, ignoring the stack of papers and open textbooks around me. Sitting around? Really, Bob? I'm teaching. And dinner is when you make it. I snapped, patience fraying like an old rope. Jake was apologetic, always whispering. Thanks for holding us together, Jenny. It'll get better. But better seemed like a distant land, one we weren't getting any closer to. And as the days turned into weeks, I couldn't help but wonder how much longer I could keep this up. One evening, as we sat down for dinner, Martha whipped out a glossy travel brochure, her eyes gleaming. Look at this, dear, she said, sliding the booklet across the table to me. We're thinking of a little getaway. A vacation. What do you think, a scarf or a shell, as a souvenir? Before I could even process the absurdity of her question, she dropped another bomb. And, darling, if you could spare $2,000 for us, that would be just peachy. Just for some pocket money, you know? I stared at her, dumbfounded. My fork clattered to my plate, my appetite gone. Spare $2,000? I echoed, incredulous. For a vacation? Bob nodded, as if it was the most reasonable request in the world. Yeah, you know, for the little extras. Wouldn't want to miss out on the fun stuff. The room spun. This was beyond outrageous. It was as if they were living in a fantasy world where money grew on trees and I was the gardener. I couldn't hold back any longer. How long do you plan to live at my expense? I demanded, my voice rising. You don't pay for anything. No rent, no groceries. And now you want me to fund your holidays too? Martha and Bob exchanged glances, clearly not expecting the outburst. Well, we thought Jake was taking care of all that, Bob said, attempting to sound innocent. I turned to Jake, my eyes blazing. And what about you? Do you think this is okay? Jake squirmed in his seat, mumbling something inaudible. Not only that, I continued, steamrolling ahead, you barge into my office, interrupt my work, and have zero respect for my personal space. I've had it. There was a tense silence. Then, Jake, his face a mask of frustration, finally spoke up. Why are you talking to my parents like that? They're just trying to enjoy life. Enjoy life? On my hard-earned money? I shot back, disbelief lacing my words. That's when Martha, always the actress, began her performance, tears welling up as she wailed about my ingratitude. After all we'd done for you. We even told Jake he shouldn't divorce you, despite everything. The room froze. Divorce? I echoed, the word slicing through the tension. I turned to Jake, my heart in my throat. Is that true? 
Jake's face went from red to white, a guilty look flashing in his eyes, before he averted his gaze. Martha, seizing the moment, clutched at her chest, gasping dramatically. My pills, upstairs. Please. Despite everything, concern washed over me. I stood up abruptly, the need to ensure she was okay momentarily overshadowing my anger. Fine, I'll get your medicine. I left the dining room in a daze, my mind racing. The accusations, the deceit, and now this talk of divorce? My world was unraveling, thread by thread, and I was left to pick up the pieces. I had barely reached the top of the stairs when I realized I didn't even know which medicine Martha was on about. Turning back, the last thing I expected was to overhear the truth that would turn my world upside down. Jake's voice, usually so warm and familiar, was barely a whisper, yet every word struck like a hammer. Mom, you nearly blew it tonight. We need to get her to sell the house first. Talking about divorce now is just going to spook her. My heart stopped. Divorce? Sell my house? The pieces clicked together in a mosaic of betrayal. His mom, Martha, was quick to reply, her voice a hiss. I know, I know. But keeping up this charade is exhausting. She's not as clueless as you think. Jake was insistent, almost desperate. Just stick to the plan. Make things hard for her, unbearable even. She'll cave, sell the house, to get away from you, and then we can do whatever. But not before. If she divorces me now, I get nothing from the sale. The coldness in his voice, the calculated manipulation, it was all laid bare. My knees felt weak, my heart shattered. This was their plan? My husband and his parents, plotting against me in my own home? He continued, oblivious to my silent presence. We'll be set once this is done. Sell the old place too, and we can finally get something better. Just, lay off the big purchases for now. Don't draw attention. I stood there, frozen, a statue of disbelief and hurt. They were supposed to be my family. How could they do this? Back at the dining room door, I paused, collecting myself. The mask of ignorance was now my best defense. Walking in, I found Martha clutching her chest, a perfect picture of distress. Oh, dear, I forgot to ask which medicine you needed. I said, my voice steady, despite the chaos within. Martha, caught in her act, quickly shifted gears. Oh, it's all right, dear. I think I just need a moment. The excitement of the evening, you know. Jake glanced at me, a flicker of something in his eyes. Was it guilt? Fear? I couldn't tell. Everything okay, Jenny? I met his gaze, a hollow laugh echoing inside me. Fine. Just tired, I guess. It's been a long day. As we finished dinner in silence, my mind raced. They didn't know that I knew. And I intended to keep it that way. For now, I would play the part, bide my time, and plan my next move carefully. They wanted a game? They'd get one. But on my terms. The next morning, I didn't waste a second. I called off my classes, feeling a mix of nerves and determination. Today wasn't about teaching, it was about reclaiming my life. My first stop was the lawyer's office. I laid everything out for him, the deception, the manipulation, and their plans against me. He was reassuring, clear that the law protected my inheritance. My house was mine alone, divorce or not. With divorce papers in hand, I headed back home, my resolve stealing with every step. The scene that greeted me was predictably frustrating. My mother-in-law, Martha, immediately started in on me for not having dinner ready. Where have you been all day? We've been waiting for you to make dinner. She snapped, her voice dripping with disdain. I met her gaze, my patience worn thin. I'm not your cook, Martha, or your maid. That ends now. Jake tried to smooth things over, with a hint of his plan peeking through. Look, maybe this is a sign we should sell the house, start fresh somewhere else, he said, his voice too casual. His parents nodded eagerly, clearly liking where this was going. 
but I couldn't help it, I laughed. The absurdity of it all, their faces, it was too much. Oh, Jake, I know about your plan, all of it. Silence crashed down like a wave. Jake's face went white, and Martha's mouth snapped shut. What plan? Jake managed, but his voice was shaky, guilty. With a deep breath, I laid the divorce papers on the table. This plan. We're done. I want you and your parents out of my house. The outrage was instant. Martha was the first to explode. You can't do this. We're family. Family doesn't plot against each other. I shot back, my voice firm. Jake tried to argue, to plead, but I was unmoved. I'm not falling for it, Jake. It's over. I've already spoken to a lawyer. His defeat was evident as he realized the gravity of the situation. They had no legal ground to stand on, no emotional manipulation left to play. Reluctantly, with anger and frustration boiling over, Jake and his parents packed their things and left. After they left, the silence in the house was deafening, but it was the sound of freedom. I sat alone in the dining room, the echoes of their departure still bouncing off the walls. It was over. I could finally breathe again, but the weight of what had transpired hung heavy in the air. I wasn't sure what to do with myself. The routine I had been so accustomed to, despite its toxicity, was gone. I decided to call my best friend, Sarah. If anyone could understand, it was her. Hey, it's me. I said, the moment she picked up. Jennifer? What's wrong? You sound off. Sarah's voice was filled with concern. I laughed, a mix of relief and disbelief in my sound. You won't believe what's happened. Jake and his parents, they're gone. I kicked them out. What? Sarah practically shouted, surprise evident in her tone. Girl, what happened? So, I told her everything. From the overheard conversation to the visit to the lawyer and the final showdown. As I spoke, the reality of my newfound freedom began to sink in. Wow, Jennifer, that's... I don't even know what to say. Are you okay? She asked after a moment of silence. Yeah, I think I am. Better than I've been in a long time, I admitted, feeling a smile spread across my face. We chatted a bit longer, her support lifting my spirits even further. Hanging up, I felt a renewed sense of purpose. The house felt different now, it was mine again, truly mine. I could do whatever I wanted with it, fill it with new memories, maybe even redecorate.
The days that followed were a blur of activity. I started making small changes around the house, clearing out reminders of Jake and his parents. With each box I packed away, I felt lighter, more in control of my destiny. I also threw myself into my online school, pouring every ounce of energy into something that was truly mine. It wasn't just a distraction, it was a lifeline, pulling me out of the murky waters of betrayal and onto solid ground. My students, my lessons, they gave me purpose, a reason to look forward every day. One afternoon, as I was prepping for a webinar that had garnered interest from corners of the globe I'd only dreamed of reaching, my phone rang. The screen flashed Martha's name, a name I hadn't seen or thought about in what felt like a lifetime. Curiosity overcame me and I answered, bracing myself for whatever came next. Jennifer, dear, it's Martha. I, we need your help, she stammered, her voice laced with a desperation I'd never heard from her before. I hesitated, memories of their betrayal flashing bright and hot. What's happened? Our house, the one we rented out, it's gone. Burned down because of some electrical fault. And, well, the insurance. She trailed off, the weight of her omission hanging between us. And you didn't pay the insurance on time. So, now you're out, with nothing. I finished for her, not without a trace of cold satisfaction. Yes, exactly. We were wondering, hoping, really, that maybe we could stay with you. Just for a little while. She pressed, each word more desperate than the last. The audacity of her request left me speechless for a moment. After everything, they still saw me as a safety net, their backup plan. I found my voice, steadier and colder than I intended. No, Martha, that's not possible. You're strangers to me now. Later, through the grapevine of mutual acquaintances, I learned about Jake's new reality. He'd taken a job, one far below the expectations and lifestyle he once held dear, just to scrape together enough for a roof over their heads and the basics. Part of me wanted to take satisfaction in his fall from grace, but another, deeper part of me just felt, tired. Tired of the anger, the resentment. It was time to truly move on, 